Okay, let us talk about uh, the video that you just saw, the fair use fairy tale. Um, to start off with, let's go ahead and recap the uh, information in regards to copyright basics. And this, of course, goes back to our last session, part one on copyright basics. Um, that uh, definition of copyright, permanently fixed work, can be seen or heard, only the copyright owner uh, can use the work, uh, others need to ask for permission. And then what can be copyrighted, books, plays, films, movies, dance, and music. And then how long does this last? Lifetime plus 70 years or for a con uh, company, 100 years. So this brings us to the concept of fair use. And uh, so I've got a little uh, screen here where we talk about the different components that are mentioned in the video and uh, begins with there are limits to and then they talk about uh, those being actual limits to the idea or the concept of copyright. And then they talk about um, how, what the definitions of fair use or what are the requirements. And so uh, they talk about a small bit can be used and there are four different um, ways in which the uh, material can be used. Um, so it can be used in the process of teaching, it can be used for news reporting, it can be used for parody, and it can be used for critical comments. So those are the ways that it can be used. And then for it to really qualify as fair use, there needs to be three conditions met. And the three conditions are uh, that it's the nature of the use. Now the nature of the use is, is it teaching? Is it news reporting? Is it parody? Is it, is it critical comment? So those are the, the, it has to be one of those four things. And then uh, the second part is how much is used. Now the amount that's spoken about is not spoken about is there is no amount set. So uh, this flies in the face of people who try to create policy policies in terms of the six second rule, the seven second rule, the 30 second rule or whatever. Um, all the law says is that it, it must be a very small percentage of the overall product. And then the th third uh, condition is the commercial effect in that the use of uh, the material uh, in this fair use usage uh, should not affect the author's ability, the creator's ability to uh, get a commercial result, get some money back for their efforts. Uh, which is kind of interesting because when you think about uh, it's a critical commentary where somebody does a, um, a reporting on a film and they pan the film, well this is going to have a commercial effect. But what it really refers to most importantly is not that sort of effect, but where somebody is using a piece of copyrighted material to the point where it cannot um, make money on its own. So then the last point of the video was fair use is not a right. It is a legal defensible position. So you cannot claim fair use until someone actually takes you to court and uh, talks to you about uh, fair use. So those are the conditions about fair use and we can talk a little bit later uh, in terms of what this actually means. Okay, so um, the most important thing in regards, because most people are, obviously in our, in our classes are concerned about the, the teaching and the fair use and how that actually works. And the, um, the again, fair use is, is one of these sorts of uh, very narrow loopholes and and the the test for fair use is actually if you are teaching a unit and you are using copyrighted material in the teaching of this unit can you teach this unit if you remove the copyrighted material and if you can then it is not fair use in other words if you are teaching about uh, the civil rights, for example, and you are using To Kill a Mockingbird as an example of uh, a civil rights film, then uh, you can use a small bit of the film in the teaching process if it's required to, to teach this, this unit. But if you can take it away and still teach the unit, then you cannot use the copyrighted material without permission. Uh, in the teaching thing. So what that really says is that if you create a video and you have background music that you think is cool but is not essential for teaching this particular lesson, then your usage does not fall under fair use. Um, it's a, again, it's a very, very narrow sort of loophole. Um, and so it is one of these sorts of things that I always uh, you know, say is if you need to use copyrighted material, go to the copyright holder and get permission and then you're free and clear and you don't have to depend on fair use because fair use is extremely narrow. 
Okay, so uh, one other thing that we can explore a little bit is uh, the um, question of the interesting case of Shepard Ferry and the Obama poster. Is this fair use or not? Um, I direct you towards um, uh, my website where I have this, um, or actually in um, our FSO um, where I have this posted, and you can go ahead and read through that article and then uh, you know, weigh in on what uh, your feelings about the Shepard Ferry case. Okay, to recap what we've been discussing tonight, um, the facts about fair use, uh, that there are limits to copyright. It's a very slim kind of a thing. So uh, part of the requirements for something to be considered fair use is that it needs to be either uh, something related to teaching, reporting the news, uh, parody or critical comment. And that fulfills, it has to be one of these four things um, in terms of its nature. And then the amount is a small amount. And you can't, it's not one of these sorts of things where you can set a policy as to how much that amount is. It's very much based on the nature of of uh, the material that you're using. If you're talking about a three minute song, then, um, you know, a very small snippet is, um, is permitted, but again, you're, you're kind of running the risk and it's permitted, but it's permitted as long as it has to do with teaching news reporting, parody or critical comment. You can't take a snippet of, of, of something and use it, um, just willy nilly. And then of course we have the, the last one having to do with the commercial effect of the usage. And then again, uh, fair use is not a right. It's a legal defensible position. And the last thing that I really kind of want to leave you with is the idea that you need to take the word fair out of the idea of fair use because people th think in terms of what's fair and that gets them into trouble right away because fair use has to do with how it's used, how much it's used, and the commercial effect. And most people ignore how it's used, the first part of it, and that's what uh, gets us into trouble. So I'm hoping this helped you out in terms of uh, understanding fair use and uh, look forward to further discussions in the future and uh, part three when we talk about Creative Commons.